Sanmonani Dumelang. Are you all okay? Right, my name is David Lale. I'm a fashion designer based in Johannesburg, South Africa. Uh, I'm going to tell you my story of uh, who I am and where I'm going and what I'm all about so that you can probably become motivated to join our crazy and beautiful, pretentious industry. Um, I was born in Fosloras, east of Johannesburg. I'm raised by a single parent, my mom, Joyce. I've got three siblings, two elder sisters and a younger brother. I studied Goditomo Primary School, and I finished my matric go to Dolisedi High School. And then I went to Sutlhelo Technicon many years ago to go study auditing. And um, I don't know what was happening to me, but I thought, let me just go study auditing and become like any other professional person. Little did I know that I'm not called to be an auditor. I'm called to become a designer. And I dropped out of auditing classes. And uh, I then, I went to study fashion at Val University in Van der Bale Park. When I went there, I did not have any background in, uh, in fashion. I was just an accounting student, like any other student. I've never sat behind a sewing machine before. I've never done anything, but um, I had to learn. I had to work 10 times harder to catch up with those students that went to art school or had art classes in, in high school and, and whatever. And, um, when we started out in our fashion class in 1994, don't ask how old I am. In 1994, I was, how old was I? It don't matter. Um, when we started in fashion, we were 50 in class. And it so happened that I was one of the struggling students because of I was. I was very bad in sketching or drawing. So I had to take extra classes and everything else. Then I worked hard, and then I was second year. I was the best student in second year, third year, and my fourth year. In second year, we were 12. In third year, we were um, four. In gra on graduation day, I was the only one that graduated. Wow. Yes. <laughs> and... Uh, and actually, I was the first black male student to graduate in fashion at the Vale University. And that was a really beautiful journey for me. And uh, to say it's possible to make it where you come from. Your background, I'm going to ask you a simple thing, guys. Boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to ask you a simple thing. For me to respect you, please respect me. For me to take you seriously, please take me seriously. I know we have a talk and things we want to talk about. I'm going to be out of your face in 10 minutes. So let's just respect each other for that. Then so grand song. All right? Sharp. So, for me, that was very evident to say your background does not determine your destination, but your choices that you make as a young person determine where you're going. Today, my age group um, that I grew up with from my neighborhood, Gofos Loras, when I look at them, they look 10 years older than me, only to find that we are all 42. 
And you look at them and you're like, huh, what happened to you? We used to go to the same school. But it's simple things that we do, it's bad choices. Bad choices that actually have a direct impact in our lives, which is friends, drugs, alcohol, sex abuse or whatever, having children at an early age, and thinking, oh, this is my life, my mom can't tell me anything, my mom doesn't know my pressures. Excuse me, your mom is way older than you, they know exactly what you're going through. Uh, peer pressure is nothing new. Uh, that you wanna have sex at an early age is nothing new. It's okay to abstain, and it's beautiful to abstain, because you don't lose yourself. And I always say to young people, Nice time, sex, I always talk about sex because it's what messes us up here. Because we think we have it all. Because I got laid yesterday by that guy and two weeks later you get laid by another guy. By the end of the year, how many guys have you slept with? All girls have you slept with? And where's your essence and where's your pride? By the time you get married, how exhausted will you be? If you do. Yeah. 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 It's a simple thing. And you ask yourself, why will your children and your children's children never live a, 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 a life that is pleasing and that is respectable in public? It's because of how you used to live. And you think um, your parents have responsibility over your lives or your body. No, you have a responsibility over your body. You have a responsibility over your life. And ask those who were promiscuous at an early age. Today, they believe and live on grant they think grant is the future. They think living on ARVs is the future. It's not. It's not. Kitoi buaka sasot. Monati how feli hufela wena. You may not like it, but it's true. You may not believe it, one day you're gonna be 42 like me, and you're gonna ask yourself, why do I look older than him? Many times I tell my friends or people that have just met for the first time, they're like, how old are you? I'm like, I'm 42. They're like, no, there's no way. I'm like, yes, I'm 42. And I'm proud to say I'm still single, and I'm still powerful, and I'm still growing, and I take care of myself. Guess what, every morning I wake up with purpose, in life to say, I have to be a game changer. I have to change the lives of the young people. I have to change how South Africa is being perceived locally and internationally. Because I'm born in South Africa for such a time as this, where there is so much drama and chaos. But guess what? Because I'm a brand that is made in South Africa by South Africans, for South Africans, and the international market, I gotta have a reputation that is positive. Imagine here I am, I'm trying to become an ambassador for South Africa, but I've got a lot of luggage that I'm dragging with me. That does not mean that I'm perfect. I'm not perfect, I've got issues, I've got so much issues, I've got so much luggage, but I don't, I don't focus on it, I focus on where I'm going as a young person. And this is what I'd like us to do as young people today, to realize that Every day is a gift, and all you have in your life is here and now. They're like, no, I'll change when I'm 21. Sweetheart, listen, 21 is only a promise. You may not make it. Tonight, for all of us in this room, it's only a promise. Question is, what are you doing right now with your life to become a greater person? Because tomorrow is only a promise, you may not see tomorrow. Anything can happen to us. Life is no guarantee. The only guarantee is here and now, us talking like this. And the question that you do ask, ask yourself, or what I ask myself is, how do I have an impact in my community or in my society? It's by making the right decisions to have a positive or a greater life. I cannot live like how my mother was raised. I cannot live like how my grandmother was raised. 
I cannot live like how my great parents were, were raised. Simple example. My great grandmother was a domestic worker. My grandmother was a domestic worker. My mother was a domestic worker. My sister was a domestic worker. I had to make a choice that I am not going to fall into the trap of being a domestic worker or even being a gardener. I'm not gonna blame them on how they were raised or how they raised me. I am responsible for my life and my future. And every decision I had to make to stay at school and be educated, finish my metric, when I finished with my metric, it was not enough. Especially today, if you don't have a qualification, you're absolutely nothing. You can't speak proper English, you can't go anywhere. Like, yeah, now it's democracy, we've got 11 official languages. In, in America, they won't understand you. You gotta speak proper English. You gotta be able to advocate for yourself to say, my name is David Lale, I was raised in Fosloras, I have a qualification in fashion design, I have done A, B, C, and D, and this is my brand. It believes in aesthetics and heritage that is made in Africa by South Africans. Materials are raw materials from South Africa. And who doesn't believe you when you speak like that? It's very simple. And then, then we have this mentality like, no, I gotta go to a Model C school to speak better. No, no, no. Model, skill, Model C school has nothing to do with your diction. Model C school has nothing with you taking your own book during your private time instead of WhatsApp, texting, and Instagram, what, what, then studying. Learning to read. Learning to read. Nothing beats that. And then we come up with excuses that, no, I didn't choose to be born. My mom and dad chose to bring me on earth. Excuse me, did you fall off your head or something? <laughs> Wake up. You've been, an you've been given an opportunity to live. You've been given an opportunity to, to do what? To go to school and become educated. When you finish with your high school education, you need to pursue your career and become educated. The government, your parents, your great parents, and everybody do not owe you anything, but you owe everything to yourself. If you say somebody owes you anything, question is, when you go to the toilet, who's there to help you do what needs you to do? Nobody. You are servicing your own body, isn't it? You are living your own system, right? Your parents are not there. The government is not there. Your guardians are not there. It is you and the toilet system. We all do it. <laughs> so why do we take responsibility and push it on to other people? Why don't you take the very same, same responsibility of going to the loo to somebody else? Why don't you pass it on? It's because it's yours. So deal with it. So such is life. Deal with your life. Take ownership. Be responsible. Being fabulous, being trending, having hair that is on fleek every day, and having no time to study, or being educated is not going to help you with anything. Being the it girl or the it boy in school is not going to help you with anything. It lasts for such a short period. Before you know it, you're over high school. And the ones that you are being the it on have moved on, they are now graduating. You are still the it boy doing grade 11 for the seventh time. <laughs> because you are the it boy and you are the it girl. And if you've been the it girl, probably you've got three kids at home that you are still trying to finish your metric. Big problems as a nation. Sorry, I'm raised by Bantu education and this is me. I, if you don't like me, sorry, can't help you. But I want to make sure that we have a great nation coming up. So it's very, very important as young people in South Africa today to realize that South Africa has moved on. In the past, we used to be a nation with great possibilities. But today's generation, we are inspiring new ways of doing things. New ways of doing things, it means I'm going to become educated and become an entrepreneur. 
You don't, not all of us can be entrepreneurs, but some of us will always be employed by some people like us. And some people will start creating jobs like us. It's very important to have a vision every day. Some people say, ah, I'll change when I'm 21, you know, after matric and everything else, I'll be cool. Listen, the more you grow, it's the more responsibilities you have. When you are 16, you've got a 16-year-old responsibilities, meaning starting to make decisions, starting to be responsible of your life. And then you continue with this mentality, like, ah, I'll change when I'm 21. Listen, when you get to 21, you've got greater responsibilities like 21-year-olds. You can't be 21 and starting, having to start now retracting back and saying, because you have a backlog now of 21, 20, 18, 19, 16, you have to catch up. Because 21-year-olds, what are they doing? They're doing their, maybe their third year or fourth year. And now here you are struggling to still finish your metric. Big problems. So use each day fruitfully because your friends, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your mother, your father, your guardians, or your grandparents, or whoever you stay with, they will not be there forever. Everybody that is in our life or in our lives are there for a borrowed time. When it's all said and done, it will be you and life. Question is, what did you do with your life when you had the time to improve it? It's very important to use your time fruitfully today. Go to school. <laughs> I laugh at this, at, at, some, at some pupils, they go to school to go prove a point to the teachers. Baby girl, wake up. Don't smell the coffee, drink it. Your teacher <laughs> is already qualified. You are still learning to become qualified. So, I am going to school just for control. Who control a man? Okay, I'm getting more bonds, I'm stressed up. And then what? And then what? Because the sad part, Corey, mathematics, yeah, bonza. But you are busy wanting obonza teacher. <laughs> Accounting, it's showing you flames, and there you are trying to prove a point. The only point that you have to prove at school is to make sure that you study and excel. And then there's a, there's a thing of self-entitlement as young people today in South Africa to say, no, we don't have money, oh, we don't have money to pursue our studies and everything. Question is, why are all the A students being chased by companies to take them to study? It's because they've done well. An opportunity is doing what is chasing them. Opportunity does not chase lazy people. Opportunity does not chase average or ordinary. Opportunity chases excellent people. I am standing here because I'm a pure testimony of opportunity. I, I personally cannot do anything on my own but the grace of God. And being able to be an excellent student, I'd never applied for a job. My very first job, I never applied for it. They called me, David, listen, we have an opportunity for you to come and become an assist uh, assistant lecturer. Uh, someone is going on maternity leave. I'm like, okay, cool, I have nothing that I'm doing for now. I'll come. Four and a half years later, I was still filling up a maternity gap for a woman who's not giving birth for four and a half years, joking. Um, I was like, but I was not called to become a lecturer. I'm, I've started to become a fashion designer. I've got a greater calling 
to go change lives and create amazing collections. 2003, I quit lecturing and I decided to go on my own. And shortly after that, I entered for the L New Talent at South African Fashion Week. And I remember that day, I was very sick, and, but I just went to SA Fashion Week offices and I was like, I'd like to enter for, to take part at Fashion Week. Like, no, it's late, registrations are closed and everything, but tomorrow we are adjudicating the last storyboards for uh, a, the L New Talent. If you want to enter, bring your storyboard. At that moment, I had no storyboard, I had no sketches, I had nothing. Went home, as sick as I was, didn't throw myself a pity party because I wanted this opportunity. Worked overnight, eight o'clock, literally on Friday morning, boom, I get to South African Fashion Week offices, Dion Cheng is there, submit my storyboards. And I was like, there we go. Lo and behold, Tuesday morning I get a call, David, you've made it to the top 12. Did I care that I'm in the top 12 or I'm gonna win the competition? No, I was like, I'm glad that I'm just in the top 12. A month later, Fashion Week happens, we showcase, I win the competition. David Lally, the brand, is launched in the industry. If I never took that opportunity when I was sick, I wouldn't be talking to you today. And that day, people always ask me to say, what is the greatest achievement in your life, or what is the greatest moment in your life throughout your journey? I'm saying the day I made a choice of saying I'm not an auditor, I'm a fashion designer, that's the best day in my life because everything else follows through from that decision. If I, made a, I never made that decision, I wouldn't be talking to you today. I'd be like some chartered accountant somewhere calculating some money that I don't even know. <laughs> there's nothing wrong with being a CA, but that's not me. Along the journey, I've become a brand that is very patriotic, believing in everything that is South African, made in South Africa by South Africans for the international market. In 2005, when it was tough and very challenging in my life, I was headhunted by House of Monatic that produces Carducci, C Squared, uh, Lyle and Scott, uh, so many brands. I was headhunted to become uh, head designer for Carducci Women. I did it for two and a half years. And I was like, uh, I'm not the one to be hired. Can I go already? Goodbye. And I left. Shortly after that, I joined African Fashion International that, that uh, presents Mercedes-Benz Fashion Week. I was one of the four designers to be selected to showcase at Paris Fashion Week alongside with Tula Cindy, uh, Tabani Mavundla, Craig Jacobs, and Gavin Raja. It was beautiful. But that for me, Remember, in life, I'm gonna tell you a beautiful secret. In life, there's things that you'll do as a group, but that does not define you as a group. You must learn to extract yourself to say, out of this experience, what do I want? During that journey, I decided that I want to be a global brand, and my journey began from then. 2009, I won Best Designer in Africa, that gave me an opportunity to showcase at Mercedes-Benz New York Fashion Week and work with the likes of Tyson Beckford, Leah Gebete, uh, Alec Weck, uh, Olucci, you name it, great people. And 2012, I was like, it's not enough. I don't want to be part of a group of designers from Africa. I want to be David Lally from South Africa on schedule. And by God's grace, it happened. Then 2012, I showcased for the very first time designer from Africa or South Africa was on schedule at Mercedes-Benz Fashion Week New York. It was Donna Curran, David Lally, Carolina Herrera. I was like, yes, Lord, won't he do it? And I was the happiest person under the sun. And over then, I showcased at New York Fashion Week for seven seasons without fail, never stopped. And we're currently doing so much work and the brand has grown enough about what we do. But also there's this beautiful program that we do, it's called The Intern by David Lale. When we have a break, you'll go see the exhibition outside. It's on SABC3 every Wednesday at 7.30, where we find designers from nationwide, impart skills and knowledge, 
and excellence in their product. Their intent by David Lale is proudly supported by the FPNM CETA because they believe in our vision and the CEO, Phil Lengende, believes in our madness and also believes in new ways of doing things. To say the creative industry is the power force of any nation. Think about the arts. We are the heartbeat of a nation. Imagine if you go to a country where there's no fashion, there's no music, there's no dancers, there's no theater, there's nothing. It would be boring, right? No? Would you go to a country like that? How many of us would like to go to New York? Yes. Guess what? New York is the heartbeat of the arts. Think about uh, Broadway. Broadway shows are always sold out. Fashion Week has just finished in New York last night. It's starting in London today, and it goes to Milan. So fashion is the heartbeat of any country and any economic force. And our vision as David Lale, the brand, is to resuscitate the clothing and textile industry to make sure that we're able to create jobs and reopen those factories that are closed because people think, ah, fashion is so difficult. No, fashion is, starts from the school uniform that you're wearing. Somebody had to decide, what, okay, we are wearing an aqua green jersey with a red stripe, a white shirt, and a tie that is red, and probably a red tunic. Somebody had to manufacture that fabric. Somebody had to cut that fabric. Somebody had to sit and put it together, and somebody had to distribute it. That is the value chain of the clothing and textile industry before it becomes fabulous and fashion forward. Finally, as I finish my story, it is no mistake that you are born in South Africa. It is no mistake that you are born today. It is no mistake that you are born in the family that you are in today. Question is, where to from here? 10 years from now, are you going to be still speaking the same language, living the same life, doing the same things that you used to do? Friends, they don't pay your bills. Parties, they don't buy your data. <laughs> Having a fabulous life every day won't make you a greater person. But you got to start making choices that are right for you, not for your friend, but for you. And just remember, every day, wake up with purpose and go to bed with reflections. Ask yourself, what have I done with my life today? Thank you. <laughs>